Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to um, draw and paint a cupcake, a birthday cupcake. Today is my birthday, so I thought it'd be fun to uh, to do that. And also I thought it'd be fun to put my essential tools and techniques for watercolor course on sale for $41, since that's how old I am today. So if you want to go check that out, I'll put a link in the video description. The coupon code is birthday41. The link should just take you there with the coupon code attached, but if not, then that's the coupon code. I'll put all that in the video description along with the supplies that I'm using today. Today. We're going to start off by sketching on a Strathmore watercolor card and we're going to make a, a cupcake. So I'm going to start just by kind of um, kind of putting like a little ellipse in there. This is going to be kind of for the top of the cupcake and then I'm just going to be drawing kind of some tapered lines down for the um, for the wrapper here and then just a curved line on the bottom for the bottom of the cupcake and then um, I'm going to just kind of make this kind of like very loose looking um, triangly mound you see that pretty well for the top and then I am just going to kind of divide that into three portions for my icing and then I'm just going to draw just some like little fluted frosting lines here very very loose guys you do not need to make this fussy or complicated I will share the reference photo that I use from Pixabay in the video description we're going to make it a vanilla icing so we can just put our sprinkles on top and there was no candle in the um, in the reference photo that I found so I'm just going to put one on there I'm just going to you know eyeball it in and put the little like um, you know that kind of spirally design that it has down there that it has coming down the candlestick and I think on the wrapper I'm just going to do kind of like a pinked edge here you don't have to have it perfect because things in real life are not perfect so the more imperfect it is the more better it'll look I think I'm even gonna have that go around a little bit and then we've got our cakey part in there and then you can put a few little lines now I'm just using a regular mechanical pencil it's just a number two which is HB um, and you will get kind of some smudgy lines so what I recommend is when you're before you go to paint just go in with like a plastic eraser these white kind of vinyl ones and just kind of knock out some of the extraneous lines so you don't have too many pencil lines I don't mind pencil lines in my um, in my painting but in case you do that's what you can do about them it can also be helpful to use a like a big flat brush to brush away any eraser crumbs if you're worried about um, if you're worried about smudges so I do have some space under the cupcake I'll probably just use that for like shadow area but if you want to situate yours a little bit lower you can the watercolors I'm using are my M grams and I'm gonna begin by wetting the background actually just wetting kind of like up to the cupcake and below because I want to do like a little bit of a tablecloth I'm just using a number 10 round synthetic this is a Grumbacher one but any brand you have is fine I find when I work on the watercolor cards um, I don't need a brush that's too super absorbent because I have um, I got you know not a ton of space to work on and these have quite a bit of sizing in it so I don't feel like I need to have them really wet I am going to grab some burnt sienna here and I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue and make myself a gray to go under the cupcake I know those are really easy colors to work with so those are nice to get in on a, um, a painting here and I'm just gonna let it kind of float out and that's gonna give our little cupcake a place to be and when I add the color I just try to add it a little bit closer to the cupcake so it can just kind of wick away and you can tip your paper to help it um, help the paint move a little bit too if you want to and then this is gonna be really handy to have for when I'm doing um, shadows on other parts of the picture if you feel like you've got any puddles you can take a um, either a dry brush or you can take a tissue and just blot gently but I kind of like the way that that's kind of flooding out on its own so I don't really, really want to do too much for it to it rather so now I'm going to go up to the cake area and um, the reference what I'm looking at actually has vanilla cake but I think I'd rather have chocolate so I'm going to take the um, burnt sienna I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it to make it a little bit richer a little bit darker and then I'm just going to go right in and paint my uh, my icing and I think I do want to just kind of make sure that I can see kind of that um, I don't want to have a flat edge where the where the icing comes in I want it kind of fluted so I did kind of I'm kind of like getting that contour there 
and I'm just going to fill in this area. So it's small. I don't have to pre-wet it or anything. Um, and these colors are pretty good. They don't stain. Uh, these two particular colors, Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna, they don't stain. So you can um, you can work work along like this and not really worry too much. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more Ultramarine, add it to that mix. So I have a nice shadow color. And that's going to go directly underneath the icing. I'm just going to drop it in there. Now, the other benefit to these colors, these two particular pigments, is that they granulate, meaning they're going to give me a little bit of texture, and that texture is going to help me get that kind of cakey look with really hardly any effort at all. And I'm just sharpening up some of these lines that got a little, uh, that got a little soft when I was painting. And now I'm going to skip up to the candle because um, that's not touching anything. If I was to paint the wrapper right now, the wrapper color would wick into the background. So that's why I'm going to a dry area of the paper. I think I will put a, um, let's see, I think I'll do a pink candle. So I'm going to use quinacridone magenta. I'm just going to do one wash with that to start off. And I'm just probably going to use this number 10 round the whole time because it's a pretty versatile brush. Let's give it, and then I'll, I could even blot it for a highlight. If when I don't want to do a highlight on something like that, like a cylinder, I fold my tissue up kind of, kind of straight. And then I try to blot it right from the center and just give it a, try to give it a little highlight in the center. I think I pretty much, because it's such a skinny thing, I think I pretty much got it all. You could also just kind of dab a, like a little uh, cotton swab too. But there, we can let that dry. And then for the candle top, I think I'm just going to do a little bit of, um, I think this is like a, gam no, it's not a gamboge. I think it's like a cad yellow medium. So it's a fairly neutral yellow. And then I think I'm just going to wipe my brush off, grab a little magenta and just drop that in the bottom of it and let it kind of wick out. And then I'll have that little bit of a, of like a candle flame look right there. Okay, I'm going to grab my heat tool and dry this and be right back. Okay, that only took about, um, I would say, well, 20 seconds to dry, so that was pretty quick. So now I want to make the icing color. I just want it to be kind of like a soft, soft, buttery yellow. I'm going to take that same yellow I used with a little bit of um, burnt sienna. And I'm going to add a little of the ultramarine to it. I think I need a little bit of that magenta in there too. Basically, I'm trying to get kind of like a really, really pale, um, neutrally yellow color. I think that's pretty good. Maybe just a smidgen more yellow. And I'm going to add quite a bit of water. I just want to do a really light wash over this for the first, the first time being. And since my brush is pretty loaded with color, I can pretty much just do a controlled wash, which I think is like the best really thing to practice um, when you're watercoloring because it just gives you such a wonderful feel for the medium. And I do go over washes and all the different types of washes and what to practice in my course. So if you are, uh, if you felt like you just need a little bit um, of guidance, getting going in watercolor, it's a really great um, a really great resource to have. And I'm also going to do a wash on the cupcake wrapper, but I think I want kind of like a, um, um, I can do ultramarine blue. I've been using that. I probably, that'd, that'd be a smart thing to do. Just use the ultramarine blue since I've been using that already. Maybe add a little bit of yellow to it just to kind of make it a little bit greenier. Let's see how that looks. And if I don't like it, then I don't have to use it. If I don't like it, I could grab another blue. That's too much yellow. I'm not really crazy about that. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab some phthalo blue for that and mix up a nice kind of almost emeraldy color. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to go with. And again, that's really green, a little more blue in that. Just going to give it a light wash across here. If you get too much water in your brush, just blot it and then just kind of spread out what you already have. Now, phthalo is a staining color, so I do want to work fairly quickly with this. Otherwise, wherever I first put it down, it's going to stain. So, you know, just keep pulling up from those edges and it's when the edges dry, that's when you get the staining. 
and again the cupcake wrapper in the reference photo is white but I just want a little bit of color because I'm, I'm kind of having a, a white background for the most part so I like to try to it, a reference photo is for reference right it's for you getting an idea and getting a starting off point but you should never be a slave to your reference photo you should use it to kind of um, move beyond now I do want a little bit of concentrated color in there I think so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more pigment blot off the excess water and I'm just gonna kind of throw some of that along the edges the wrappers generally are a little bit lighter at the top anyway because they uh, separate from the cake so it just makes it a little bit lighter I'm gonna throw in some of this mixed gray color I'm gonna mix it into my uh, color that I made for the wrapper and I'm gonna add that in as well because you would have those colors added in there that's where your dark would not be super bright if you've ever um, baked cupcakes you know how like the the wrappers get really light um, they are their colors get less intense I should say because you see the cupcake through a lot of times people will get extra cupcake wrappers and put their cupcakes in the secondary ones like just plop it in there because it gets they do get dark okay and then we're gonna let that dry so now we can go back up to the um, candle and if you are if you want to switch to a smaller brush for this go right ahead I'm just gonna keep using it because this has a nice sharp point on it this is just a Grumbacher number 10 round there are lots of good uh, synthetic rounds that are not very expensive so um, like I like the Royal Lane nickel ones a lot and basically what I'm doing is just painting in those um, what do you call them scallops or or what just kind of like a little spiral on there just to give it a little bit of dimension and then if I want I can go a little bit into the uh, flame here however much you want to do is up to you now for the um, the cake top itself that feels that feels pretty dry I'm going to rinse off my brush and pick up some of the um, the brown with the uh, it's just a kind of like a darker brown color it was a burnt sienna plus a little bit of ultramarine blue plus a little bit of that yellow in there so it was like a, kind of the first frosting color I made before I decided to lighten some of it and the thing is you don't want your brush too wet but you don't want your color too dark so you kind of have to make the color that you want on your palette and then blot off the extra moisture with your tissue and um, now you could spend a lot of time doing this and building up a lot of layers but this is a greeting card I want it to be kind of fast and fun um, and actually I'm looking forward to my mom and my sister visiting so they're gonna be along anytime but I did want to get this fun little birthday watercolor out all I'm doing is just adding some frosting some frosting streaks I mean it's just the shadows you know when you use like a star tip and you're you know piping a, a frost piping your frosting on that's that's all that is and look at how easy it is to achieve that definitely something you can do as a beginner and then I am gonna blast it real quick with my heat tool you can use a hair dryer the only reason I use a heat tool is because I use it for um, other arts and crafts projects so totally just use what you have I'm gonna grab a little phthalo blue I didn't even clean my brush because I know that's neutral enough and it's not really gonna affect my color too much here on my palette there these are my Graham colors um, which are my favorite watercolors but I'm wondering they might be my favorite because they were my first uh, but I do really like them and um, I do get asked a lot how come you don't use those more often and honestly the reason I don't is just because the palette's so big and I can't have the whole palette in frame when I'm doing a demo and I know um, a lot of people like to see the the palette while I am mixing so now I don't want to I don't want to like just paint every wrinkle because if I do that it's going to look really fussy <clears throat> pardon me and kind of fake so I'm just kind of going here and there getting these little uh, streaks and now remember phthalo blue is a staining color so um, it is going to kind of grab my paper okay uh, actually that dried because I got a lovely birthday phone call from my friend Kathy so uh, that's always worth stopping my painting to chit chat with her um, so I'm just picking up another little brush load full of the um, blue I'm just gonna add it towards the bottom and side kind of piecemeal 
a little bit there, a little bit there. I'm gonna clean off my brush, just kind of blot it to remove the excess water. And just I'm gonna kind of fade it out a little bit. And that way it can just kind of give me a little bit of a, another layer of shadow there. There, and if it's too dark, you can just simply blot it. But I think that's good. It gives me a nice, um, maybe just a nice little, little bit of shadow. Now, if you want some more shadows on your um, the icing itself, you can go in with another layer. I wouldn't cover up everything you've done. I just kind of go in and maybe redefine a little bit because um, because that that will just give you that second layer of. Well, shadow because you you see different layers when you're looking at like how you get your highlight which is a little bit brighter then you get your mid value then you got a deeper shadow like in the um the kind of deeper creases area so that's pretty much just what you're putting in there just that deeper a little bit of shadow but again you can kind of fudge it around you don't have to worry about it being perfect the bottom of like a um bit of icing will be a little bit darker than the top and if you want to do any more of that with the um with the candle, you can take that magenta and grab a little bit of that blue and you can give it just a little bit of shadow and some of those, um, kind of that fluting that you put in there. And that's pretty much all you need to do for this. If you want to add some sprinkles, you can. Um, I think I will leave mine as is because I like it. I want to thank you so much for spending a little of my birthday with me today. Please give this a thumb up if you like it. And if you are looking to enroll in a watercolor class that will teach you all the tools and tricks you need to know to get started off on your watercolor painting on the right foot, check out my essential tools for watercolor painting. It is on sale for $41 this week. That is about 48% off. It's a great, um, it's a great deal. And I've had some wonderful feedback from students um, you can join a really wonderful group of students there and uh, learn how to paint thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting